Hi everybody, do you have a dog that's absolutely full of beans and you just want to teach it to calm down just that little bit? I can help you. We all love dogs because of their enthusiasm and their personality and their willingness to interact with us. However, we need to balance that with getting them to understand that self-control is really important to have a strong and stable relationship with us. In the video today, I want to look at two different ways that we can help the dogs to get a better understanding of how to relate to us. The first one is something that everybody comes into contact with on a day-to-day -day basis, and that's teaching the dog how to deal with inanimate objects like food in particular, to get them to have a better understanding of self-control in and around how they interact with food and us. And the second and possibly the most important one is how we get the dogs to understand how to deal with active or moving things such as balls, us running around, other people, other dogs. So we're looking at self-control from two completely different directions. Understanding active behavior is really important in coming to terms with how our dogs relate back to us. Effectively, all dogs, just to varying degrees, will be pushy in their response to us. Dogs by nature aren't patient. They want things when they want things and they learn by interacting with us what actually works, how we interact with them and how they can press the right buttons to get what they want. Even simple games like throwing a tennis ball or throwing a frisbee can get the dog to determine how it plays with us. Most dogs will bark or jump around or move on the spot to try and get us to interact with them. So the more we come to terms with Getting them to control their own arousal or their own excitability can help us teach them self-control across the board is really important to get them to understand how to relate to us in a more passive way. So this is a video of a game that I generated with my dog um, who is quite active and likes to play tug of war which is effectively a high energy behaviour. And the whole point about teaching impulse control with regards to high energy behaviors is to try and develop what's called a competing motivation, which is effectively a behavior that's a complete opposite of the one that the dog wants to exhibit. So you're probably noticing the dog likes tug of war, so there's a lot of pulling back. And in order to instigate the game, I'm trying to get the dog to offer a behavior which is quite passive, and in this case tactile because I wanted him to still have the ability to touch and to engage with me. But as we develop through the game, what I'm trying to get the dog to realize is the quicker he settles down, the quicker he calms down, the more relaxed he becomes, the more opportunity there is for the game to commence. So if the dog is being highly pushy and highly active, the game doesn't continue. And what I'm trying to do progressively over, over the long period of time in playing with him is to develop more activity when we're actually playing the game but much more control to initiate it so the dog learns to just chill out and stay calm and stay relaxed by nature dogs are scavengers and opportunists and while unchecked this can potentially be a problem for us to deal with if we're clever about it we can use this desire or, or potential problem to our advantage. So much like what we did before in the previous video where we tried to swap excitability for control, we can use exactly the same process to get the dogs to realize the quicker they calm down in any particular situation where they want food, the quicker they get access to the food. The video that I'm about to show you is one taken from a puppy training sequence that I did a while ago where we're using food to teach the puppy how to concentrate in the sit and develop higher levels of self-control to be able to get access to the reward. And the benefit of this is we can start to get the puppy to think right out of the box and process information and learn the fundamentals of self-control as part of the training process. Really powerful training. Sit. Now sit at the moment, it's important because I've told him sit and he's visually interested in this. Good boy. So good boy in this situation means you're heading in the right direction, but the game's not over. Sit. See how he's moving? He's trying to figure out what's happening next. Now he's thinking. Free! Right? So I'm giving him that release command, and then he can physically get out of that sit and try and find where the food is. So what I'm trying to do from minute one in the training is switch on his thinking. Sit. Good boy. You can say yes if you want to. Good boy, mate. Sit. And then I'm going to show you how to shift his attention away from the food. 
Right? Because what I don't want is for him to be fixated purely on this. Okay, so if we're doing this correctly, that's it. So he's looking at the food, and he just looked at me quickly. Now that's not a sit. Sit. What I'm going to do is wait for him to look at me voluntarily. I take a free good boy. So see how we got that shift of attention, and that's important because what I don't want to be doing is continuously talking to the dog to get it to understand what to do. I need to switch him into a state of mind that he's actually problem solving. Sit. Sit. And with me saying free, I'm actually encouraging him out of that sit so he gets access to move, so he knows the pressure's finished, just like when we held him, and he gets his freedom back. And all he did was calm. And what I'm waiting for in this sit is a really calm behaviour. Sit. Good boy! And then we build longer duration. So exercise one is just get about getting the sit to happen for longer and longer and longer without any distractions. And the intent here is to have an end in mind. I want to go five seconds, and I want to go seven, and I want to go ten. Free, good boy! So have a look away. The next video that I want to show you is again with this same dog, using the same concepts, but this time moving away from food and starting to introduce active games such as tug of war or ball playing, but using the same concepts to develop the same behaviour through a different medium. The tea towels are good things. So what I want to do is just want to get him used to this. Right? I want to build this interest in it. Right? And this is why this is much better than a rope toy. Because I'm getting the dog interested in biting. Right? And if he's, once he starts to get a good sit, I'm going to sit. Sit. Free. Right? So that I introduce that release command. Mm. And that free me, oh, I can bite that now. I can get the food through, I can get a pat, right? And then what we're doing with this is I'm only pulling back as much as he's pulling forward, right? I'm not ripping it out of his mouth. I'm just applying the same amount of tension and we're having a good old tug of war. Now, I don't win and he doesn't win. When the game finishes, lift him up a little bit, he lets go of it, sit. Free. And then we start again. Right? Which is why that forced forward is a good thing. And we play. Right? So I'll do that again. You also notice how I'm holding it like this. As he gets better at this, the distance between my hands is going to decrease. So then he has to figure out the texture. Does the biting hands keep the game going, or does biting the towel keep the game going? Because if he bites my hand, it stops. Right? That's down the track door. So Oops! The other thing is when I'm playing tug of war like this with him, I want to touch him. Because you get excited, you'll growl. Right? All that really good stuff. That's not aggression, that's just excitability. Good boy, good boy, oh, good boy. Because this is a real outlet. It's having fun, right? I don't want to play anymore. A little bit of pressure. Just a bit of tension here, introduces a gag reflex. Sit. I've got this again. And then we're back to playing. Yes. So nobody wins, but I'm getting calm. I want to relax. And then when he's playing tug of war, he can go crazy. Yes. Right. So I'll show you from this side of things. Oh, good boy. Oh, see how he just re gripped? Right? What I'm wanting to do is to remount it to get a better grip in his mouth. And that works really well when we're using cloth like a shower. Right? Right. Again, I don't want him to play anymore. He spat it out. Sit. So as soon as it's out of his mouth, and then we take the toy away. Right. Game's over. Once we have a dog that actually understands a concept of stop, go, calm, excitement, and the transition between the two modes, we can then use it for even things like loose lead walking when we're out in the real world. 
where simply by virtue of how we walk and how we interact with the dog, we can get the dog excited, we can get the dog to stop, we can get the dog to calm down, we can get the dog to match our speed. And then the relationship between us and the dog becomes one of these incredibly fluid situations where the dog is responding to us, depending on what we're doing at the point in time that we're training the dog. These tools are amazingly powerful. Again, a big thank you for taking time to watch the video. I hope you found it useful. If you like the content, please don't forget to hit the subscribe, like and share button so we can grow the channel and keep the information free. Thanks again, folks. Stay safe.